G'day, it's Adam VK4GHZ. If you've got a Yosu G5500 and you're trying to use the external control port on it to, uh, to power remote equipment, you might run into a problem with the power supply. Now, it's not regulated, and uh, if you try and draw too much current out of it, it will sag really badly. Now, that's most noticeable if you're trying to power a 5-inch connection off it. It's pretty easy to fix. Stick around, we'll look at the problem, and we'll also have the answer. That's coming up. To understand what's going on here, let's have a look at the Yosu uh, G5500 instruction manual. Scroll down. We'll ha have a look at their specifications. Now, pin 7 provides, this is the external control port, provides 13 volts DC to 6 volts at up to 200 milliamps. Now, if we just uh, go forward in time, we'll look at the 5500 DC manual. Oh, bear with me, there it is. Pin 7 provides 13 volts to 8 volts and only 100 milliamps now. So they are obviously aware that the, the voltage drop on, um, on, the, on that external control port was a problem. This is the external control connector, pin 7, where we've got the 13 volts is uh, up here. Let's trace this along up here. It connects to this resistor. R1010, that's a 20 ohm 5 watt resistor. That's where the, uh, the voltage drop is occurring. So if we just follow this back, uh, we've got a, a filter capacitor here. There's a bridge rectifier and it just goes straight to the 12 volt uh, secondary, the transformer. Looking at the schematic of the G5500 DC, we can see we've got a 12 volt secondary on the AC transformer. Goes into J6001. Let's find that on the main unit and just zoom that up, J6001. It's going through a 1 ohm, 1 watt resistor to our bridge rectifier. We've got our filter cap there and it'll be this rail here. Goes through a fuse, that's new, through the 20 ohm, 5 watt resistor down here. Uh, to this connector here, which then goes off to the external control connector on the rear of the, uh, the controller. So the only, th only thing new about the G5500DC is that it's got a fuse in line, which is a good thing, and uh, that 1 ohm, 1 watt resistor, but it's essentially the same. What we'll do now is hook up our K3NG based controller to that external control port with a 3.5 inch connection, and then we'll have a look at it with a 5 inch connection. Time to start playing with the toys. Got the Yosu G5500 here, a K3NG based rotator controller board. It's one of mine, uses a TNC 3.2, and I've got the three and a half inch connection hooked up. Just using the digital storage crow, we're gonna look at the input to my five volt regulator. This is what's coming out of the Yosu controller. You can see it's, it's, up, it's up and down a little bit there, a bit of uh, ripple on that. I've no real problem though. So this is fluctuating between 14.2 volts and 11.7 volts. So there's absolutely no problem at all for a 5 volt regulator. Now let's hook up the 5 inch connection. Oh dear, hear that? Yeah, it doesn't like that at all, does it? All right, let's have a look at that uh, 13 volt rail coming out of the Yesu. So that's disgusting, look at that. So that's uh, dipping down to just over four volts, 4.06 volts and 16.2 uh, volts. So there's no way a 5 volt regulator is going to maintain regulation with, uh, with only 4 volts appearing at its input. Yeah, that's not good at all, so we have to do something about that. 
Let's pop the lid of the G5500. I've already unscrewed it. Take the top lid off. And there's our offending resistor. That's the 20 ohm 5 watt resistor right there. So probably the best course of action is to um, either reduce that in value, perhaps 5 ohms or 10 ohms, or uh, bypass it altogether. So what we'll do, let's bypass it, hey? All right, well, I think the best way to approach this is to uh, unscrew the two remaining screws that hold the front panel on. Now, of course, make sure you've disconnected your mains before you crack the lid. All right, so I've removed three screws on either side. And that allows you to get pretty good access to the board here. So this is the 20 ohm resistor. We need to bypass. Still, come on, are you not a sniffer? Still got a bit of a, a new smell to it. Right, so what I'll do next is I will unscrew these four screws here and that should let the PCB uh, that should uh, free the PCB up from the meter movements. So let's do that. Yeah. I need to magnetise that screwdriver. Nope. Um. All right. Let's, let's grab some pliers. Okay, that's the four screws. And we've got pretty easy access, as you can see. So our resistor, the 20 ohm, it's called R1010 on the schematic, but it's just R10 on the, on the um, silk screen. We will just fit a, okay, so there's a couple of options here. You can either um, solder a link across the resistor itself or well, that orange wire that goes to um, pad 29 which is here you could move that orange wire to the other side of the resistor I think just for now I'm just going to put a, uh, a, a wire link across that resistor all right so I've got some uh, tin copper wire the uh, that 20 ohm resistor are these two pads here let's put some Fresh solder on that. Like that, I'm just gonna turn this wire. Yep. Side a bit of solder. Here's the other. All right, there's our link. Just cut the remaining tin copper wire off. All right, so that's that's that 20 ohm resistor bypassed. We'll just screw it all back together again. outside holes for alignment first then we'll just do the two inside holes yep. it kind of helps if the screwdrivers are magnetized I think but then again that can be a pain in the ass as well so yeah come here for your fumble fingers today jeez all right so I've got the board there Make sure we're not going to pinch any wires when we put this back together again. I'm just going to screw, refit those uh, two screws that hold the front panel in. 
just so it's not flopping around everywhere. Okay, so that's that. All right, so everything's back in place. Let's um, let's see what we get now. Ah, turn it on at the mains. All right, so it's not carrying on anymore. That's good. And if we look at the uh, storage crow, we can see that now we're getting that uh, 13 volt rail is uh, fluctuating between 16 and 12.6. So that's uh, that's absolutely no problem at all for a 5 volt regulator. So that's a very quick and easy way to, uh, to rectify that problem. Because I've got these terminated with um, eight pin dins at either end, I can't easily break that uh, supply rail and measure the current, um, which would be the smart thing to do, but uh, that's just a little bit awkward in this configuration. So what we can do is just measure the current requirements of the nections. So I've got the uh, EEV blog BM235 multimeter here on milliamps and as you can, let's call that 450 milliamps. That's a really easy modification you can do so to, to maintain that that 13 volt rail doesn't die on the ass like it does. So just bypassing the 20 ohm resistor seems to be a good solution to fix that uh, voltage fluctuation you're getting on the 13 volt rail if you uh, have higher than normal current requirements. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do like this type of stuff, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and click the notifications bell. And we'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.